Orthodox Church, the, the reason we all come together and the reason we're part of the church is uh, to hear the gospel, the good news, uh, the Evangelia that we say in Greek or Ukrainian, which means the good news of Jesus Christ. This church um, kind of began its life in, 19, in the late 1940s with the first Ukrainians coming to Sydney. The church community formed pretty soon after 1948 when the first uh, priests arrived. And at the beginning, they started their life at town halls and at various other places that were uh, loaned to them for use. The church can be that place where they can feel at home. They hear their language. They uh, get involved with the choir, with serving uh, in the altar with me, um, praying and praying for their family back at home. Many who have family back at home fighting um, in the war. So normalcy is probably the greatest takeaway I can say. And from that comes everything else. Basically, when you walk into an Orthodox church, you're taken away from the cares of the world where we have our church made with an ornate sense of style because it is the kingdom we are trying to show. It is not that we are trying to show our riches or our earthly benefits, but that we show what the kingdom is and then the beauty of the kingdom, the beauty of eternity with God. to Australia last year in the end of July because of the war in Ukraine and actually my story is <laughs> so uh, unusual because I don't have relatives here I don't have family here I just uh, knew some guy who helped me to um, raise some money for Ukrainians in the beginning of the war when the war started all shops were closing uh, all uh, chemist houses and others and I just found some guy in Australia who helped me to raise money and to help our people and then I shared my thoughts with him that I probably will leave Ukraine because I want to be in a safe place I want to work I want to contribute at least by money for my country and he uh, said me uh, all about um, Australian government help and he shared with me all this information and I decided to try uh, myself in Australia and um, I thought probably it would be a bit easier for me uh, to stay in English speaking country that was also one of the reason I have my mom in Ukraine yeah and she lives just eight kilometers from the Russian border with all the threat of military attack every day and when war just started her city was surrounded by Russian army and they didn't have food one and a half months so people just shared food with themselves all bridges all roads were destroyed and it was impossible even deliver deliver some medicine or food so my mom uh, is still there and uh, she uh, I want to bring her to Australia but uh, it's difficult for her because she doesn't speak English and she uh, could not work here. Within the church grounds, the, we have a, a charity that runs that individuals have begun, um, Blue and Yellow Hearts. We've seen a, a great influx of, of newcomers come to church um, and try and find a home in the community. Yellow Hearts is a charity for Ukrainian displaced people arriving um, in Sydney, Australia, and our aim is to help them settle into their first few months of life here in Sydney. Uh, we help them with essential items plus with um, cash donations as well to help them, their children at school as well as uh, when people were first arriving we were giving them $200 each to help them with things that we didn't have in the hall that they needed. We have a lot of um, supporters from individuals, schools, um, community groups, mm -hmm. clubs, churches, organisations that mm -hmm. either see my website or hear about Blue and Yellow Hearts and they're all wanting to somehow support Ukrainian displaced people through Blue and Yellow Hearts. So we also run um, out of the parish hall of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Strathfield West 
Um, so we have a lot of people contacting Father Michael to also ask how they can help Ukrainian displaced people. I've had so many people say that this is their, feels like their second home because when they come here they feel comfortable, they know that the help that they need is here. It also gives them a chance to share their stories if they want to share their stories. So I guess there's a little bit of um, you know, psychological help for them, whether they share stories with me or with others. So they make um, friends here uh, for, and, and talk to people who've gone through similar situations. When I uh, just was planning to go to Australia, I didn't even expect so much support. I knew that Australian government would help us. They offered us to stay here for free, to get uh, education, for example, or uh, permission for work. But I couldn't even expect so big support from charity, uh, and especially from Blue and the Yellow Hearts charity. and. Uh, you know, <laughs> I came here with small suitcase, uh, with almost nothing, uh, and I got everything from here, like some kitchen stuff, my clothes, um, I don't know, just some uh, hygiene products and even food, food they help us uh, like few times <laughs> in a month. Yeah, and probably in the beginning uh, it was even more important than now. But people are still coming and they need support and they need help. And some of them don't have money. Uh, so this is unbelievable, incredible support for us. I would also say that this is not just support with some stuff like food and clothes and so on. It's also like emotional support. Natalka or Lexin do so much for us sometimes. When I have just difficult time, I can call her or I can sit with her and share all my, my, my difficulties because, you know, this is really difficult to start everything from the beginning. Like, to uh, learn a language, to learn how to drive here, to find a job, to find accommodation. And sometimes this is so, so difficult emotionally and we can get support here even like this, um, like I, I would say some psychological support. Society, with its um, many resources, is giving us many um, more avenues to help, uh, far more than, say, our parents and grandparents were given in the late 40s, early 50s. This church was built by refugees, for refugees and for their families and those that would find solace here. We're doing good, and I think we're showing that love, and the most important thing is that they feel that they have a place where they can just continue their spiritual lives, but also their community. How does the church help parish members in times of crisis though? I think by promoting normalcy. I think the most important thing is promoting peace, promoting calm, promoting a place where they have a sanctuary.